Hello sci-fi world, my name is Dominic Monaghan and I am at the Sitges Film Festival. Uh, starting with the obvious questions, um, you had a, a giant leap to fame with Lost, where J.J. Abrams presented himself to the world. How was that phenomena, how, how you deal with the, the fame? I mean, you know, fame's not really a real thing, it's kind of an illusion quite intoxicating for young people. But if you've lived a life before you've been famous, I think you understand that it doesn't, doesn't really matter one way or the other, you know. I wanted to be an actor when I was a kid. And I realized that maybe if I was successful that, that there would be an element of being famous. But it wasn't the reason why I did it. I didn't become an actor because I wanted to be famous. I, became an actor because I wanted to act, you know. So, you just, I, I'm aware of things being different, but I feel the same. It, fe it feels to me that everyone around me becomes different, but I'm the same person. That's the phenomenon of fame. We've seen that you have a lot of fans around the festival. Mm -hmm. Is it the same everywhere, or only when they see you for these first days? They get bored of it eventually. Uh, it depends where you go. I think there are some places in the world where people expect to see famous people more, you know, on airplanes, in airports, at hotels, at concerts, at shows. People just feel like they're gonna have those experiences more. So in, in those type of places, it can sometimes be like that. But n normally in my day, you know, going to the gym or going to the supermarket, you know, it's not a big deal. And also I live in Los Angeles, so in Los Angeles they're used to seeing different people, you know, and it, it doesn't bother them. Are you a fan of Fantastic? Of this festival? Of uh, Fantastic in general, cinema. Like fantasy? Fantasy. Yeah, of course, yeah, I grew up with it. You know, I grew up with the films that really um, influenced me as a kid were things like Star Wars, Dark Crystal, Labyrinth, The Goonies, Indiana Jones, 2001. Uh, th those, those are the big major things, Oliver Twist maybe. Um, so fantasy is a big genre for me. As I become an adult, I think probably documentary films are my favorite genre of film alongside biopics. But I'm a sucker for fantasy and sci-fi. So, I think I'll always seek, seek those movies out. Uh, Pet was written for you 10 years ago. Uh, how does it feel to have a, re a film uh, made on purpose? Yeah, it's great. I mean, it's very complimentary that a writer thinks that you're capable of doing the things that he's written. You know, it took a long time to get it made, so it's nice to be in this scenario where people are actually able to see it, you know. The thing with movies is that they usually take a while to get made, you know, from writing a script to turning it into a film can take four or five years, but 10 years is quite unique, you know. Um, it's good, I mean, I don't really feel like I am like Seth, but I think when, the, when Jeremy was writing the character, he was watching Lost, and he saw that the character that I played on Lost, Charlie, had the ability to lose his control to go a bit crazy and Seth does that too so I think that's why he wrote that part for me. Uh, your character uh, had to grow in this decade and uh, changed. Uh, how, uh, how have your feelings for the character changed? You, you, uh, I think you've uh, have lost hope of ever getting the film made. Yeah, but you know, a little bit, but like life goes on, I, you know, I continued to work doing other things and you know, it's, it's like breaking up with a girl, you know, at first you think you're never going to get over it and then eventually it's just a memory that you had where you're like, oh yeah, I remember that, you know, so there was a little sadness of like, oh, that's a shame because it would have been good, but sometimes with the universe, you have to release tension on it because when you're holding onto it too tight, it's never going to happen. So if you just let it go and let the universe decide for you, you can get lucky and a problem.
project like this, I got lucky. Ten years ago, you meet that girl on a bus when <laughs> getting back from work. Yeah. Your character is very complex, as you said. Have you created special layers or based on the human you have become to do that character? Yeah, I spent a lot of time on my own. So I told my friends that I wasn't going to see anyone for a month while I was making the show and the only the film, the only person that I saw was Ksenia. I said to Ksenia, if you want to hang out or do anything, go have dinner or just hang out, let me know. So I would see Ksenia a little bit because I wanted to just see her. And I looked after some of my friends' dogs because obviously Seth likes dogs. And then the only other thing that I did a lot was I read books about murderers, which is, you know, a dark subject matter and, and uh, gave me bad dreams. But it's worth it to to go into that slightly dark place that Seth is in. Seth's a lonely man and he's not a happy man. And I'm generally quite happy, so I needed to explore the idea of, of not being happy. And it's easy to do that when you read about murderers. So your preparation for the role was creating an obsession with Ksenia? Yeah, a little bit. In a, in, a, in a more balanced, natural way, but I wanted to just be around her, so... I also served her a lot in the daytime. I would go get her tea or lunch or food or her slippers or her dressing gown or her book. Anytime she was locked in the cage, I would, I would try and serve her. What do you need? What can I do for you? Because I wanted to, to adopt that archetype to be her servant. You know? During the shooting also? All the, all the time, yeah. Which is good for Ksenia. She loved it. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. Um, have you ever considered over the years to produce your f the film on your own? Um, yeah, I just didn't have the money, you know. It was, it was locked up at uh, MGM and to buy the film from MGM and have it be free was a lot of money and I just didn't have the funds to be able to buy it. So when Carlos got involved with the film, he had people that had a significant amount of money that were able to say, okay, well the first thing we can do is give Metro Gold Road and Mayor this money and then take the project back. So that's, that's why it was locked in this place for a long time. You always have the illusion that uh, actors have a lot of money, but sometimes they have the same contingencies that every one of us has. Um, have you ever lost projects you wanted because they couldn't produce it? Or were yeah. forced to do films you didn't want for money? Yeah, I've been in that situation a lot. And also, it's, it's all relative, you know. I mean, it's, it's, it's how you base value of money, you know. I think even if I one day make a billion dollars, I'm still going to be aware that $4 for a chocolate bar is too expensive. It doesn't matter if I have a bunch of money. I'm never going to spend that because I understand the value of things, you know. So when I was interested in trying to get pet and I found out how much it was going to cost, the value of it was too high. It made no sense, you know. If it, was a, if it was a number that I thought, oh, well, that makes sense because then I can take it and turn it into a film, I would have bought it myself, you know. There's, there's been times in my life where I've been attached to a project and then someone else has come along and done it instead. There's been times where someone else has been attached and then they weren't available and I've done it instead, it's, it's part of the business. But um, all you have to do is just keep trying to work on good projects, you know. There's years where you're quieter than other years. Like this year I haven't worked, I'm going to work when I finish this project. Because I'm picky about what I do. So I say to my agent, it's not as good as Pet. Why would I do this? It's not as good as Pet. We're trying to find something that's as good as Pet, if not better. And there's not a lot of good stuff out there, so you just have to wait. Uh, how, do you, uh, uh, how do you feel seeing this pet project of yours coming to life, uh, looking for a commercial distribution and all that? Yeah, I mean, once, once you do the work, you want as many people as possible to see it because you've, you've done the work, you're proud of, of uh, the other people that have been involved in it. And then you think, okay, well, the next thing now to do is to have people tell me how they feel about it. So this is the exciting part. All the other part was the work. Now we sit with audiences and watch. We don't have enough time. We have to cut the interview, but this was amazing. Cool. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank very you. Very kind. Yes, okay.